Um, we well, we've spoken about the grid, and Rashid's taken the grid into physical architectural forms as well. I don't. You've got to talk about that. I think. Well, I think one area that it's hard to ignore is the question of um, the the subject matter that you often draw upon, and um, in the next door gallery. Um, it's one of a series of works, Desperately Seeking Paradise, and as you've probably seen, you can see the city skyline um, in the sand a little back. Um, you've also made a, a, a work you referred to, twin, The Twins, which is, of course, a an, relationship refers to the Twin Towers. Um, your work as, a, as, a, as an artist from Pakistan, um, post 9-11, obviously has many reference points to that the perceptions, not only in the West, but um, externally of um, Pakistan and the role of, um, and, the, and its wider role in, in the post-9-11 phenomenon. What, how do you feel you, you wanted to address that? And what, what have you, I've always felt that in a lot of your works, there's quite a strong message coming forward. It's a, a sense of a critique, trying to critique overt uh, perceptions of Pakistan. Um, but at the same time, um, it's quite a set. I, I sometimes found it verges on the didactic. I wonder if that's fair. Yeah. Uh, I think these are two questions I will talk Sorry, about. Sorry, uh, talk about desperately seeking paradise and the, uh, uh, the subject it deals with and other things it deals with later. But maybe I'll com comment on the second part first. Uh, the images being uh, didactic, especially referring to uh, uh, not recent works, I guess, mostly the. Uh, uh, I think mean specific body work you're referring to? Well, some of those grid, the grid pieces where you, the, the obvious image such Bail as the twins gives covers. ways to okay. um, the small okay. images of Pakistan. Uh, when I first uh, made a, a work like this, uh, which, which based on uh, the device of macro and micro image uh, called I Love Miniature, that just you know um, happened while producing a show for a curated show. And it took me for some time to realize that, OK, I can actually make use of this conceptual and formal device to hold together so many varied interests of mine. Um, but translate all those interests of mine and references in, in some kind of language that is simple and, and, and can have access to relatively wider audience. I also realized that in doing so, I may be running into the danger of uh, uh, making one-liners. And, and then, but this, this, this question had to compete with my desire towards the late 90s uh, to make works uh, which are not just for the audience of 10 people. I just, somehow I had desire. I didn't have any big ambition to make work for everyone, but I just wanted to uh, uh, go into another direction. So I, I thought that, uh, uh, we, in this uh, the time we are part of, we competing as artists uh, with the aesthetics of uh, uh, advertisement and, and, and so much uh, imagery which come this kind of uh, didactic approach uh, around us. So if I can use that as a deceptive sort of uh, uh, framework, and then if uh, I try for it to reveal itself in, and unfold in different stages to reveal any deeper content it may have, I try. But uh, even if, this, if there's a disk for it to become a one-liner at times, I thought this was a disk worth taking. And, and that's why I ended up even dealing with you know, some sort of cliche uh, images uh, of, uh, of, let's say, bail. And, 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 uh, but having said that, I also experienced one thing which I would like to share with you, uh, learning from uh, this. I, 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 I think built two different kind of audiences for myself. One was within the strict circles of art and uh, my peers, my, 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 uh, my fellow artists, or uh, just outside that circle, people who write about art or who talk about art. I, uh, and then the audience which was just outside those circles, you know, from maybe writers and from you know, uh, 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 people from the advertisement, from fashion, from other circles. So the first one I, I, I realized they tend to um, actually reduce the work to some kind of jargon or term they can associate with. For example, if they'll see one work, oh, this work is about post-colonialism. And whereas to some other urban audience, when uh, uh, educated urban audience, well, they would experience this work with micro and micro imagery, but they would actually 
would spend time with lots of smaller images, and and then as we know that all images, nothing is meaningless, and and they can be uh, there's so many thousands of narratives can have other things to offer, which can come later, and I I just build more faith in that audience, and and and, and I I enjoyed that phase, and I. At least I intended. I, I think that they go beyond that simplicity which it first offers. And uh, for example, uh, whale series, for instance, for an audience, international audience, may refer to uh, this this uh, uh, sorry maybe some kind of conflict between the uh, Western media and uh, popular male thinking in the non-Western world. But uh, there's another layer to it which probably uh, is understood by the uh, art uh, scene within Pakistan that many women artists. Uh, they started uh, using uh, the image of whale as uh, as a metaphor in their work, and then to the extent that it almost became a cliche. So not only looking at the cliche propagated through uh, uh, the Western media, but also the uh, uh, propagated the artists within uh, in the country itself. Similarly, works like uh, A Day in the Life of Landscape uh, may appear to be you know a contrast between an impressionist painting and 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 what my life is in urban Lahore through that images of traffic. But it's actually about uh, you know uh, more specific specific issues to do with Punjabi nationalism, as it as it as it uh, tra uh, translated in uh, Punjab landscape school of painting uh, through works of painter like Khalid Iqbal. So there's more other layers which also come into play. But this has been a conscious decision for it to appear simple and didactic in its first appearance. And about the uh, about the desperately seeking paradise. Um, Yes, the political references uh, are, are there. I just hope that I have succeeded uh, enough for it to go beyond that. And I hope that when, when, when the 9 11 is no longer uh, um, as relevant as it is in our lives uh, right now as an issue, I hope that because of my other formal interests uh, and, and, and what I'm, uh, how I'm linking with uh, the uh, architectural forms and, and that geometric abstraction and the um, recurring. Uh, subject of uh, confronting or juxtaposing abstraction and representation in my work, uh, that also is, remains there, even if the 9-11 issue remains, uh, uh, becomes uh, less important at some point. I, I hope that, that that happens, because this is a work in which uh, most of the recurring elements in my practice throughout my career, whether it's grid or pixelation, uh, or whether it's uh, posing uh, abstraction and representation in front of each other, they all kind of come together in, in one piece. Well, I, I mean, I think that you very, very cleverly sort of described the complexity of that, that identity, not, no longer being, uh, certainly not being a single identity, and that you are very much appropriating cliches both from your own culture and from beyond. Um, and I suppose that appropriation, not just of concepts, but also of images, is, is a key thread in your work. Um, that we, it's impossible. I mean, you've been described as an artist's artist, and I would say you're so, so primarily so very much that because there is so much rotation and layering going on all the time, and I, I see it down here, downstairs. Um, maybe you could talk about a few influences in your work um, because names come up all the time, and, and, um, and there was that nice story you were telling us earlier of um, going... Uh, coming from Pakistan where you've been looking at postmodern imagery from the 1990s and contemporary artists and right. you've been influenced and interested in the work of Blechner and Peter Halley and there was all these sort of references in your head and, and then you went to study um, in the United States where you were immediately suggested to look at Agnes Martin to go back to the roots of, of abstraction. Um, so there, there are so many artistic reference points, but I thought perhaps you could talk about some of the ones that are most immediate to the work downstairs in particular. I'll just uh, try to maybe give you a chronology of some of those uh, um, brief. main <laughs> uh, inspirations. Uh, although they're, I mean, I think the inspirations are much more complex than that. But uh, yes, I mean, as, as a student uh, studying in Pakistan, and where we all the books that we study from art day uh, happen to be uh, from. Um, other privileged cultures, and and and, and, and we uh, develop an appreciation, um, which I did. I uh, grew up in, as an art student, looking at uh, in the first in second year of the program, you admire Sigmund Freud, uh, not oh, sorry, uh, Lucian Freud, uh, <laughs> and uh, because of the sheer skill of that, that's what you're trying to do in your work. 
and not that you know for some people it does remain uh, uh, inspiration uh, for me it changed because i was heading towards a different direction and then you uh, look at the post war american painting and appreciate you know jasper jones and Rauschenberg and anyway so i ended up at mass art uh, soon after my graduation and i thought you know i will be now learning beyond what i had already equipped myself with the knowledge of uh, art from that region that originated from there which i do feel this is, is for everybody to share in the world it's collective but it originated from there so i will have a first hand experience but somehow the, the program i was part of at that point still uh, was uh, going through the hangover of uh, modernism for the reason that can vary from you know school to school sometimes even for composition of teachers changes that so i was uh, i was actually a little bit uh, frustrated because the work i was trying to make looked very uh, ab deceptively abstract and then looked like uh, great paintings of agnes martin and bryce martin which i wasn't aware of actually by the way this one i, I got familiarized when they may mention this and then i looked at it more openly and then try to simulate whatever i could but at that point my frustration was that i'm looking at zahur and his use of uh, grid and that and looking at tradition uh, of painting within that region through his work not by passing it and through that entire journey i arrived to something which may look similar to something else but the trajectory is very different so there was uh, the frustration but that all got soon toned down when i started uh, an, an understanding and reading works of the uh, 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 writings of people like peter haley and and an entire group known as neo conceptualists that you know believes in the uh, uh, content as something which lies beneath the surface not necessarily in the appearances which can often be deceptive so that became a, you know gave me a conceptual strength and was an inspiration and and returned to pakistan already uh, having a big desire to not just make uh, such subtle works that i made back then i thought you know i need to open up to so many different kind of imagery around us and and then and, and, and returned to pakistan and 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 to, to know the developments of art in in the 90s uh, within that region that lahore was uh, uh, mostly uh, banking on uh, the new miniature um, lahore you know being a very uh, mobile sort of city and, and and also partly decadent uh, <laughs> city and and, and uh, uh, karachi being uh, without the burden of uh, history of uh, any such thing much much more relaxed and they looked at the some artists looked at the local vernacular and a trend came out called karachi pop often by people like me there's no authentic you know art history written that pattern <coughs> so uh, uh, so that was an inspiration and then uh, kudus mirza who no most of the people know him as a uh, as a, a, a art critic and, and and the work that he produced was a huge change from his earlier work from that he produced at rca um uh, it was sort of introducing conceptual art or conceptual painting of the local version to pakistani audience and was a big i think uh, inspiration for me um and then the strange crosses between new miniature and in this pop sensibility is something that we all uh, share in the you know last decade uh, and and then uh, not a direct influence but uh, the last 5 years of being part of this uh, new um, university that we uh, together with few friends founded there uh, beacon house national university is to me is is defines the uh, sort of uh, uh, it leads the way of how the uh, some of the leading artists are in, in, over in that region are thinking and producing their work so not an inspiration but a larger inspiration that i'm also part of being part of that whole group and would if we were to take you downstairs and walk around some of your um sculptures um which we should talk about more broadly but are there particular artistic reference points that you're thinking of i mean to my mind all sorts of things you know there's jad boetti or all, all, all sorts of artists come into my mind but is there any particular people you'd like to reference um in this exhibition um some of the works that you see they're not uh, from uh, they're from 2 uh, years old like what lies between fashion blur but many other works which have been produced in the last one year somehow what connects them is this again uh, uh, my my desire to uh, use abstraction as a subject so the cube cuboid works that you see 
uh, a deliberate attempt to you know play with the aesthetics of cube and 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 just uh, sort of uh, unpack it and and and, and open it to uh, with, with the help of uh, uh, imagery familiar imagery and i don't know how much i have succeed, uh, succeeded it's an initial uh, sort of stage uh, which uh, which which uh, resides on this uh, uh, new interest of mine which uh, which looks at photography as a subject as i mentioned earlier uh, that i was trained as a painter but photography or photo content became part of my work as a tool as a medium but not not just looking at it as a medium there's a desire in me to to explore it more as a subject as it and finding it more fascinating that way so this is just an initial attempt to to uh, uh, to push it in third dimension often when we have something in 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 the in, in its own relaxed context we we are unable to see it unless we detach it from that context so that's what i'm exactly trying to do to take the photography out of outside the context of a two dimensionality hung on the wall which is very convincing and believing and then sort of uh, frustrate the form by making it three dimensional uh, that's the initial premise and let's see how far i can push it back in my future works and in fact i i i feel that you know when i can take them that's when i don't know if i can claim that's a new direction might change but uh, i think they need to go on some other scale some other architectural scale another interest of mine that you see in this work uh, in the recent times and i think that's where i can uh, really make them work uh, with this premise i just explained uh, Captain, my question. Kind of oscillation between abstraction and representation makes a lot of sense. And also, talking about uh, different kinds of work, but the uh, play with cliche that you're kind of embracing with uh, iconic images or cliches, it's not dissimilar. These aren't cultural cliches, but they are kind of ontological cliches. They're just obvious things that are around. And you're taking them and sort of presenting them, you know, both as things and image. Um, and the image is quite interesting. Looking closely, the pixelation seems to me to be taken to a point just shy of abstraction. You know, you can just recognize that it's newspaper print. You can just recognize that it's a book rather than, than, than nothing. Nice. Really pushing things. Yes, and I'm trying to push it, uh, push it, as I said, I mean, maybe some other skills work better, but uh, the idea is to uh, not uh take an image and simplify it or stylize it hmm. um i'm i'm just pixelating it without making a tempering with the image at all if it's an image of some object in my surroundings uh i'm i'm not trying to economize by taking out extra you know values and tones and colors it's just simple pixelation if that can be called stylization hmm. and in that way make it appear as if it's a sleek mm -hmm. sort of uh, you know um, mm -hmm. fashionable art mm -hmm. and 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 it's not it's it's it's, it's something else